Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today we're going to talk about dueling definitions because that's what this boils down to. Got a message that basically said, hey, I watched your video about uh, what to do when experts disagree, but it presupposes the idea that there is a general consensus. What do you do if there's not a general consensus? Because I just watched two of my friends disagree, and uh, I was wondering if you could shed a little bit of light on it. One of the friends is a, quote, bearded word that starts with a B that means your parents aren't married. It's a nickname for a specific group in the military. The other is a lawyer. And they took issue with the use of a term. During the hearings, one of the cops used the term terrorist. Now, the person from the Army says that's not the right term. And the lawyer says it is. Who's right? Okay, so this group, if he, he was a member of this group, he probably went to a specific class on this. And he's using the definition. Um, it's the use of violence or threat of violence to influence those beyond the immediate area of attack to achieve a political, religious, ideological, or monetary goal. Beyond the immediate area of attack. The people they were trying to influence were on scene. So, it's not that word. That's not the right word to use. He probably threw out the term coup or self-coup. Self-coup would be the, the right term, assuming that it was organized and intentional. Does that mean the, the lawyer is wrong? No. No, the lawyer's right too. The lawyer is right as well. Because the lawyer's not using that definition. The lawyer is using the statute, which I'm, I'm not mistaken, the cop read during the hearing. The statute does not include that section about having to be, uh, having to influence those away from the immediate area. That's not part of it. So they're both right. When you run into this, uh, this issue where you have two experts who disagree, maybe start from the position that they're both right but there's a misunderstanding of what they're talking about. That's why they disagree. Um, and I will tell you that this, is a, this isn't a new argument. This is hotly contested. The federal statute is super broad, like ridiculously broad. I think the elements to it are, uh, it has to be dangerous to human life and has to appear to intend to intimidate or coerce. Like, that's it. It's a ridiculously broad statute. Um, I'm not a lawyer, but I, I think it's probably so vague, it's void. Um, it, it's really broad. Now, is that the right term to use legally? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer, but I'm pretty sure that that chicken from Futurama could make the case that the term applies. Um, but when you're talking about the academic theory, it doesn't because it's missing that part of the definition. This is a semantic argument. People who are uh, experts, who are very well informed about a topic, generally they also have huge egos. <laughs> so they may start arguing over nothing. It, it, this whole discussion that you describe could have been solved, could have been avoided by simply explaining this is the difference. This is the missing piece. This is the definition. Um, so there you go. Do I think it's appropriate to use that term? I, 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 I would go with self-coup to, to me. But there is no self-coup statute in the federal, uh, in, in the federal books. Um, discussions like this kind of get away from the main points here. And the main point is that it certainly appears that the use of violence or the threat of violence was used or attempted to be used to influence the, the federal government and overturn the election. I don't think anybody should lose sight of that. That's what was going on. Um, that's the important part is that the institutions that the United States relies on 
we're under direct attack. Um, now, you, you can argue about that all you want, but when you get to the end of the day, that's what happened. So, anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.